Hi, welcome back to another video. I'm Afiq, and in this video, I'll be talking about how I structure my days as an independent physics researcher. So, three years ago, I graduated from Cambridge in maths and theoretical physics. Um, and whilst I don't work in physics anymore, I still wanted to keep up with the subject. Um, for the past three years, I've been sort of looking at papers, um, talking to people, and trying to do textbook problems. But only recently have I been doing research in a more serious manner. Um, one area that I chose to focus on was computational physics. Uh, computational physics is the act of using computers to solve complex equations that humans can't solve by hand. In theoretical physics, a lot of the solutions or cases that we are interested in are actually solvable by hand. But uh, at a uni level, um, that's not really like a true reflection of reality. In reality, uh, potentials and your physical setup is often unsolvable by hand. And so using computers is of deep interest so that we can actually figure out what's going on. One of the reasons why I chose this field is because I actually met up with and know researchers in the area uh, quite well through mutual friends. And so that avenue of mentorship has been open. Um, having like a mentor helps the problem selection aspect of it and helps you sort of understand what problems are interesting. And one thing about computational physics is that there's lots of low-hanging fruit just as an artifact of how many cases there are that have not been explored. So one thing that I found when I was trying to look for theory research problems, everyone seems to be sort of concentrated on the big picture of what happens when you try to mix quantum physics and gravity together. And whilst there's many different avenues at tackling that problem, um, it's all sort of streamlined into a massive super problem and that wasn't so appealing to me. So I found out that a lot of the problems in computational physics are sort of isolated, more tangible and suits my schedule more since um, I have a day job and I, it's not physics related. So I needed to focus on problems that are smaller and more tractable. Why am I doing this as a independent? Well, to be honest, um, I do not think the academic life suits my current goals right now. Um, I prefer to be tethered more towards industry, so I'm not willing to do a PhD for now, but I don't know what I might think later on. I'm making this video because I do not know many people who are attempting to do physics research whilst also working a day job. And uh, I wanted to maybe lay out the land of how it might feel in case someone is attempting to do it. Um, I find that academics and the academic community um, has been quite gatekeepy in the sense that it's really hard to like contribute and talk with people if you're not pursuing that full time. But the unfortunate part is that there's loads of people that want to do it part time. It's just that they haven't really found opportunities to. Also, I do think that uh, there are some strong points of people who work in industry in terms of time management, organization and commercial awareness. Uh, that can contribute positively to the current physics research landscape. And um, whilst I'm not saying that I necessarily have those qualities yet, um, I'm definitely trying to see and look at places where a fresh pair of eyes might help. In terms of the general things I'm working on, I'm working on looking at the band structure of certain materials. Band structure is what levels of energy um, electrons can occupy in a material. So 
Do you know from quantum mechanics that in an atom, a single electron can't occupy a spectrum of continuous energies. It has to occupy certain energies at certain levels. Um, that's why quantum mechanics is called quantum mechanics, because quanta means small packets, meaning discrete levels of energy. Um, similarly, in materials like metals, insulators, or any material really, uh, there's a configuration of energy levels that electrons can occupy. And figuring out what this configuration looks like for certain materials is really important because it helps you build semiconductors, uh, it helps you build superconductors or insulators, and really helps you understand what a metal or material might do when you apply an energy or an electric field to it. In particular, I am looking at some questions about how some materials behave when they are immersed in water. And this adds an extra degree of freedom because you have uh, water molecules that might change the properties of the system you're trying to measure if it were alone in a vacuum, for example. Now, typically, the main tools to explore the band structure of a material uh, in a computational way is called DFT. Now DFTs uh, stands for density functional theory and it basically brute forces uh, what energy levels are solutions to the equations that govern a system where the Hamiltonian of the system is defined by the user. Uh, however, when water molecules are added to the mix, you're adding another degree of freedom and you have to take into account how water molecules might move around the base material you're trying to inspect and also how the charges of those water molecules will affect the Hamiltonian of, those, of the system that you're trying to probe. Now, this is hard because DFT is a very computationally intensive process. What it boils down to is you have a big matrix uh, that encodes all of the properties in your system and you're trying to solve for the eigenvalues of that matrix. Eigenvalues of a matrix are values where there exists a vector such that when the matrix acts on a vector, it scales it up by a certain amount but leaves it look unchanged. Um, this scaling value is an eigenvalue and in quantum mechanics, eigenvalues are the permitted energy levels of a system. So this is really just a massive matrix eigenvalue solving problem. And that is fucking slow. So today, one of the things that I wanted to do was to set up the necessary packages and the code to do a simulation where I could figure out the energy levels of a material in water. Now, this is highly non-trivial because packages that do molecular simulations tend to be buried in pretty obscure websites, have pretty bad documentation, and in general are really hard to set up and very hard to use. Um, one of my research sub goals is to figure out some code to simplify this whole process. Uh, but for now, what you see me doing here is setting up very simple toy models to check that my installation of these packages is working. So one of the packages that I'm using is a free package called Gromax. Uh, Gromax is a molecular simulation software, but it's not quantum. It means that it models the molecules in the atom with just simple Newtonian and Maxwell dynamics. So classic forces and like classic electromagnetic magnetic forces between atoms from electricity and magnetism. Um, one of the things I'm trying to set up here, as you can see me do, is figure out a way to combine uh, software that looks at the quantum band structure of a material, but does it in conjunction with classical molecules um, surrounding it. So that is quite non-trivial. Uh, there are software packages out there that are paid that 
do this for you, but um, my budget is zero, so I'm trying to figure out what to do and how to set this up using free software. Uh, part of this often involves chatting with a lot of people, so here I'm just on a Google chat with um, some other people who are working on the similar problem and trying to figure out if there are any leads. So yeah, um, that's a quick example of uh, how I would spend an hour doing independent research.